Hi, I'm Katie with Older and Wiser, and I've been making masks. Now, a friend of mine would like to make her own, so she asked me to do a video tutorial on how I make my little pocket filter masks here. So stick around and I'm gonna show you how to pull this off. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make these simple surgical masks. It's pretty easy and I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. This is a, this one right here is a two layer mask with a filter pocket. And the filters that we use is called Ollie Fun. Now this is not an N95 material, but it's as close as we can get at home. So this is gonna offer you pretty good protection. Um, so basically this is the back and there's a pleat on the back here with this particular style and you just put the filter in like so and I, I lay it down to do it. I can't do it standing up, sorry. And I cut these filters to be uh, six by five because you just really want it to cover the nose and the mouth area. And then you just kind of give your, give your mask a little jog like so. Now these are to be put on with the pleats down, facing down, I'm not sure why, but that's what everybody says. And then you just hook it over your ears, pull it down, and pull it up. Okay? Super duper easy. It's pretty comfortable. If the elastic doesn't fit right, I don't know if you can understand me with that on. If the elastic doesn't fit right, tie a little knot in it if it's too big. Um, you can also find ear savers online several places. It's a plastic piece that goes around the back of your head and you hook the elastic to that instead of behind your ears if you have to wear one of these for a long day. So that's recommended. So um, as far as these filters go, it's very, very important, and I learned this the hard way. These can be hand washed and hung up to dry. Do not put them in the dryer. Do not get them near an iron. Don't use super hot water. Just regular soap and warm water is fine because they will melt this will melt <laughs> very easily. So be very careful with the filters. And then the, the mask can be hand washed and hung up to dry. So let's get to it. Okay, so the basic overall pattern for this is nine by seven. That is gonna be your outer, um, your outer piece of fabric no matter what. So I've already got this one cut by seven. I'm gonna go ahead and slice it by nine right here. And I will, I will tell you guys, I don't sew. Like this is not, I'm not very good at this. I don't, I can't make quilts or anything like that. Now these two pieces, this is for the two layer mask, okay? So this is the one that I showed you that has the, the cut all the way across on the fabric. So you've got your front fabric, which this is a flannel and then a cotton on the back. I don't recommend two layers of flannel because it is hot. So you're gonna cut your outer piece nine by seven and the two uh, back pieces, you're gonna cut nine by four and a half. So we've got four and a half right there, okay? And once you get those cut, you're gonna wanna go to your ironing board. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your fabric is ironed nice and flat. I have a fantastic steam, steam iron here. And then you're gonna take your two, your two flat pieces right here and you're gonna press a little seam on the wrong side of the fabric. So see, I'm gonna start pressing my seam there and I try to do, because I want the fabric to overlap on the back of the mask as much as possible, so I try to do a pretty, a pretty small seam there. Let me steam that a little bit, set that aside and then do your other one. If you have a printed fabric, you're gonna wanna really pay attention to which way you cut the fabric and where you're putting your seams at. This fabric is pretty generic, so it doesn't really matter that much. And I got a little ripple there, but that also doesn't matter. Now you're gonna take all of this fabric over to your sewing machine. You're gonna sew your seams on your back pieces. So, all right. So, and then make sure that you backstitch the beginning and ends of your seams. And 
And then I just lift my needle up and add the second piece without cutting because it's a real time saver when you're just going down the line and you're making mask after mask. Okay, so I've got my seam sewn and now I'm gonna piece the mask together. We've got one fourth inch flat elastic cut into seven inch strips. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, you want your, the, wrong, the right sides of your fabric facing. So I've got my front piece here and I'm gonna layer my back piece at the top. Now I use these quilt clips. These things are so much better than pins. So you're gonna clip it at the top, fold one half back, put your elastic right there up at the top. You want it poking out a little bit so you can see it um, because I don't cut things straight. And then you're going to clip that there and you're gonna clip your edge piece down like so. And then I'm going to fold this one back and put it back that way. I've got to hold it down because that elastic really likes to move. I'm going to clip it again. And it is important to keep your sides down, at least for me, and clip the edges while you're working with your bottom piece. So now I'm going to make sure that my, my seam is up and I'm going to go ahead and attach the bottom piece. Just like the top piece, I'm going to line that up and I'm going to go ahead and clip it there in the middle so it doesn't move. Now I'm gonna fold this back, and this is where it gets a little tricky. You wanna run your finger along the elastic underneath there, make sure that it stays flat, and then you're just gonna draw it down here, and it bunches up your clip at the top. That's to be expected. You're gonna pull it over so it's coming in at a corner, at an angle right there, right at the corner. You're gonna flop your fabric over. I hope you guys can see this. Hold it and I always scoop mine to the edge of the desk and then I clip it like that. Now I'm gonna hold it down along the edge, pull this clip up and clip those two pieces together. Make sure you don't get your elastic in there. And I'm gonna do the other side the exact same way. And now we're ready to sew this thing. You're gonna sew around the outer edge um, you're gonna double, you're gonna backstitch over the top of the elastic. Let me show you how to hold the elastic on the edges. Okay. So, and I have my needle worked all the way over to the side because I have to use the edge of the foot as a guide. So, backstitch all, every start and stop. Okay. Now, I'm approaching that elastic. I'm gonna hold this down, pull that clip, and sometimes you have to kind of reposition it and hold it there. Now, I'm gonna go forward. All right, I know I'm on that elastic. I'm gonna backstitch it. I am going to get in there and right there in the middle of that elastic, I'm gonna lift my needle and pull. Now, this elastic is right here. I don't wanna sew over that just at the corner. So I'm gonna reach into the pocket here with my fingernail and I'm gonna pull that elastic off to the side underneath. And then I'm going to put my hand on it like that. So my elastic is all the way over here. I'm free and clear. I'm gonna sew a little bit. I'm gonna backspace over that. And then I am going to go crazy. All the way down, making sure that I can feel my elastic over here. If you sew over that elastic, your mask is wasted. Now, it's all bunched up. I'm gonna give it a little pull. And just like I did before, I'm gonna reach in here underneath and find that elastic and pull it off to the side and hold it. I'm gonna get a little bit closer before I pull that clip. Now I'm gonna pull my clip, keep my elastic where it's supposed to be, and take it on down to the corner. You can always feel when you hit that elastic, it's just a little, a little bit punchier. So now I'm gonna take my turn, I'm gonna lift up my foot and go. Now this elastic is all the way over here. You don't have to worry about running over it, but don't forget to backspace. That backspace just secures the elastic. And I'm gonna move it on down. 
getting close to my other elastic here. I'm going to make sure that I pull that so it's nice and straight. Pull my clip, readjust my elastic just a little so it's at the corner. And that's that's a hard part for me. That elastic just doesn't like to stay put. Okay, I got another couple. There we go. Backspace over. Go to where I think my seam allowance should be and turn it. And just like with the other side, you've got to find your elastic underneath the flap. My fingers there underneath the B fabric. Give it a little tug off to the side and hold it. Forward, back stitch over the corner and get crazy. Bring it up to my seam allowance and turn. And because my elastic is way over here, I don't have to worry about moving it. This is the last straight fit here. Back stitch over, just to make sure nothing's coming undone. Pull it and snip. Okay, pair of scissors, inside out mask. You're gonna round the corners because you don't need all of this excess um, elastic. It makes it hard to stick, hard to turn. Don't get too close to your stitching. By the end of the night, my floor is always littered in little tiny whoop, bits of elastic. <laughs> Throw it on the floor if you want to, that's fine too. I'm kidding. All right, now you're gonna turn it inside out or right side out. It's already inside out. Okay. Make sure you get those corners. You can gently tug on that elastic to make sure that you get your corners all the way out. I usually give it just a little bit of a tug. Also, that helps to make sure that your elastic is in place. All right, now you're gonna take it back to your ironing table and I iron from the back side. You're gonna press your seams flat don't iron your elastic. That high heat really compromises the elastic and you want these to last as long as possible. An elastic is getting super hard to find. So, all right, I'm gonna get your seams all pressed. Get them as flat as you can um, because we're gonna make the pleats next. So we are going to make our pleats next and I try to look at the overlap. So this is gonna be my top. Another option that you can do is you can put a nose piece. This is a pipe cleaner. This is a pipe cleaner that I cut in half and then I wound the ends around. And what you would do if you wanted to add a nose clamp to this is you put it at the top before you make your pleats. You make sure you get it at the top and the center. And then you stitch a seam around your pipe cleaner to keep it in there. Now, if you have a nose piece, um, I know a lot of people are putting masks in the microwave. I don't recommend doing that, especially not if you have metal in it. So here we're gonna add our plates. This is our top, because this is the, the overlap here. So I'm gonna have this mask facing me, and very simply, I'm gonna put my fingers up here, and I'm just gonna fold this down one time. Now I only add the two plates to mine. Um, my sewing machine does not handle um, massive amounts of pleats very well, especially when I'm doing the thicker fabric like the flannel. So I'm gonna try to get those as even as possible. I was a little off there. There we go. And the next one, I'm gonna right about below that middle seam on the back and clip it. Clip it. Then you're gonna take this back to your ironing board and press it flat. Okay, now we're gonna put our seams on the end there around the pleats. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that first one. Put my foot down. Don't forget to do your back spacing. You want these to last as long as possible. So I'm gonna go down and power through it. And when I get to the end, I'm going to lift my foot up and go back a second time. Make sure that your feet don't get up underneath those pleats and then I'm going to turn it around and go one more time. I'm going to 
backspace, backstitch, sorry, it's not typing, this is sewing. Pull it and cut it, and you're gonna do the exact same on the other side. Okay, and now you have a finished two-layer mask. These are supposed to be worn with the pleats facing down, and your filter pocket is back there. I've heard a lot of people say to make it two different fabrics, that way you know which side is the back side. So that's what I've been doing. So now I'm gonna show you how to make the three layer mask. Okay, I am making this three layer mask for a friend of mine. At her company, they're required to wear black on the outside, but she likes pink. So we're gonna give her something to work with here. All right, I am going to put my pink fabric, this is the back, and I'm gonna put those two facing together. So the front of this fabric is gonna be facing inward. See, front to front, like that. Put it like so, <laughs> like so. Now, I'm gonna take my, my ruler here. Okay, now in the center, on the, so this is a seven by nine piece of fabric. All three of these that you cut for the three layer is gonna be nine by seven. So on the seven inch side, we're gonna go right in the middle and I am going to make a two and a half inch line there that you can totally see. My pen is not working again. There it goes. <laughs> Takes a minute sometimes. I don't have a fabric marker, so this has to do. And you're gonna do that on the other side too. Okay, that line that we just drew, you're gonna make a, a little stitch right down that line. Don't forget to back stitch. Back stitch, and then all the way to the end, back stitch. And then I'm gonna lift up here and take it all the way to my other line. Right to the end. All right, we're gonna cut that out. You're gonna cut your line there on both sides, and then we are going to go to the ironing board. Now we've got our seams that we did right here, our stitching is right here. I'm gonna take the top on the bottom. And I'm going to fold it right up to the top. I'm gonna to hold that in place and I'm gonna iron along the crease there, just like so. And then I'm gonna flip this whole thing over and I'm gonna do the same thing on the reverse side. I'm gonna line that up at the top and I'm gonna iron that flat. Now, we have a hole right here in the middle and that is where you're gonna put the filter in and out of on the back side of this particular mask. Now, we're gonna take our fabric and what I'm gonna do is run a seam right along the edge of our, our center line there, okay? That just kinda helps keep it in place and you can tell where your line is a little easier. There's nothing terribly important about this one. back down the other way. Okay, now unlike the two layer one, this fabric is right side out on both sides, so you don't have to worry about it. And this one is just a plain black piece of fabric, so there's no front or back. Other than that, we're gonna assemble it just like we did the other one. So I'm gonna lay my fabric out and give it a clip. Grab some of my elastic strips here.
It is important to do the, both pieces elastic on the top before you move down to any of the elastic on the bottom. Because once you pull an elastic down, it cinches everything up. line is flat and I'm going to go ahead and pull it down and get it positioned and clipped at the corner. It's a lot harder to see on this black fabric. <laughs> there we go. I'm not going to bother putting a clip in the center. I do need to do the side on this one. On this one, I'm going to flip it over so I can see just a little bit better because I can see the outline on that pink fabric. There we go. Now we're going to sew all the way around the edges. Don't forget to backstitch at the corners. Now these are a little bit harder because you don't have this wide flap to work with. You have to kind of work your way in here through the center and tunnel over to pull your elastic out of the way. I forgot to backstitch that. I'll go in and reinforce that later. All right, putting my finger back in the opening. I'm going to pull this tight at the corner and pull my elastic over. Pull my clip and go for it. Trim your corners and flip it right side out. Be careful you don't hit your stitching when you're trimming your corners. And right side out we go. A little tug at each of the corners. Just make sure you got the corners pulled out as much as possible. And now you're gonna iron it flat so you can add your pleats. All right, I've got my pleats in and my mask ironed and ready to be seamed along the edges just like we did with the other mask. So this is the outside fabric. Here's the inside fabric. There's your little pocket for your filter. Don't forget to backstitch. Now I'm gonna turn, give it two more lines. the other side. So there you have it. This is a, essentially a three layer mask. You have your one layer on the outside, your two layers inside, and then if you add the Ollie Fun filter, you have a four layer mask. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw a link below to this Ollie Fun fabric so that you can look into it for yourself. Um, yeah, I, it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. If you have any questions, drop a comment below and let me know and I'll do my best to answer it. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the little thumbs up button and maybe subscribe to our channel. We try to put out videos every single week and I'll see you next time.